Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Kirsten and it's the start of another weekly vlog. And this week I've started off with Kingsbane by Claire Legrand. This is the second book in the Emporium trilogy and it's a book I've really been excited to read because I absolutely loved Furyborn. So the premise of Furyborn is we are following two different timelines. One set in the past where we're following Riel who is an elemental and she is one of the strongest elementals they have ever come across. So as a result she has to go through trials to prove that she can control herself and her power. And then we have Elena who is a thousand years in the future and she's kind of set herself up as a mercenary and is an indestructible mercenary. Obviously things start to change in both timelines and I really really enjoyed the route that it takes and Kingsbane is just adding to it, I'm loving it. So, so far in Kingsbane we already know what's going to happen to Riel because the very first chapter of Furyborn shows how Riel ended up who she ends up being and in Kingsbane we're still watching her change and that descent and we are seeing quite a lot of her thoughts and how some of her actions are clearly showing the start of that descent and I love it. I think it's really, really well done. And then Elena's storyline, we're not sure where that's going because it is in the future and we're kind of figuring out things as she finds them out. So I'm really enjoying this story. I have also started to annotate my books. So I've always been one to tab up. You can't really see it that well, I'm using transparent tabs. But I love to tab up sentences that really resonate with me. I don't tab up scenes that make me sad or happy or things like that, unless of course I really feel connected to them and then I'll do that. Otherwise I won't. It tends to be just like a quote or something that I really, really like that sticks with me that I think I like that. So for instance, so far in this one, I've tabbed up in my kingdom, in my world, you would serve no one. Because that's an important part of who Riel is and what makes her start to change the way she does because she doesn't want to keep serving people. So I just feel like that's an important one that is going to be setting off the spiral of events that she's going through. So I've tabbed up things like that. But I have also started to actually write in my books. So like here, for example, I am only writing in pencil at the moment because that way if I don't like it, it's easy to erase. But I'm so far in this book, I am writing notes about the changes in Riel whenever I see them, noting the fact that she is changing. If I think there's any foreshadowing going on, I'm putting that with a question mark to see if I'm right later on because I don't want to tab up everything in the book. As much as I think it looks really pretty, it's just not who I am. I'm also thinking about using highlighters because there are certain sentences in here which I think are really good for the plot but aren't necessarily ones that I want to tab up but I still think need showing in some way. At the moment I'm underlining them in pencil but I do think those ones where they're not quite at the level I want to be tabbing up but I still think it's good for the plot, they're ones that I think should be highlighted. I don't know, I'm still working on it, it's something that I'm going to try and if I enjoy doing it for this book then I might start changing it and doing it in pen just because for me so far it's really adding to the reading experience because I'm really focusing on what's being said, I'm thinking about my thoughts on things and I don't know, I'm just enjoying it a lot more and it is my book, I'm allowed to do what I want in it so if anyone who doesn't like highlighting and writing in books and stuff like that, that's absolutely fine, that's up to you but for me, it's just really adding to the experience. Anyway, I think I am currently late for work, so I need to get going and I'll catch up with you soon. Good morning, we had a very good reading evening yesterday. I got home from work and literally just read. That's all I did for like three and a half hours and it was perfection, I loved it. Which also meant I got a really decent chunk of Kingsbane read because I now only have just over 200 pages left to read and I do love this book. I think the characters are so well done. So as we know, we're following Riel and we know how her story's gonna end. We know that she ends up as the bad character, but I just love the descent that she's going through. I love how morally grey of a character she actually is and the fact that she's so easily manipulated because she's got so much pride, so much vanity and it's just... I kind of understand it as well because she's being forced into a role that she doesn't want to do all because if she doesn't 
they're going to kill her for having all this power and it's not even her fault that she has the power. So I completely understand the law that Corinne has for her and why she would be tempted, like it's totally understandable. So yes, I love her, I think she's a great morally grey character. And then on the other side we have Elena and she feels a lot younger, she's very conflicted at the moment, she feels very lost, she is having to deal with a lot which I can't say too much because it will give away stuff but she really is and I kind of feel for her and honestly I'd feel kind of the same if I've had to go through all the stuff that she's had to go through right now. Both these characters I really enjoy, I enjoy both plot lines, I think it works really well and I'm excited to see how this is going to finish up and we have the third book which I have pre-ordered and that should be coming out in November I think. I'll have the date up here somewhere. If you haven't read them give them a chance. It's really, it's an engaging trilogy and I love the plot line, the way we've got the two timelines and our two characters and how morally grey they both are. I just think it's really well done. Once I finish Kingsbane which will probably be tomorrow because I don't really tend to read much on a Tuesday because I spend time with my partner instead, I have four books left of my TBR and the reality is I'm not going to get all four of those finished by the 1st of October. That's just not going to happen. Three of them most likely, but all four probably not. And the four books that I've got left I'm really just not feeling right now. And they are all meant to be really good books and I do want to get to them at some point. It's just not what I'm in the mood for at the moment. So first one of them is Cinder, so we have a Cinderella retelling which I love retellings but this is a sci-fi retelling and that's making me nervous. Then we have The Court of Miracles which is a Les Miserables retelling, which again, love retellings, but I don't know because I have heard some things where it kind of jumps quite a bit in the timeline, which I'm not always a fan of, and yeah, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to get on with it. I am interested in reading it because, I, as I said, I do love a retelling. I also have The Night Circus, which is meant to be this beautifully written book, like an adult version of the Carvel trilogy, which I loved Carvel, but again, I've always been a bit put off by The Night Circus, and I couldn't tell you why, it's just something I'm not as interested in. And then The Furies, which is one that I'm interested in reading, but just not quite right now, and I think that's more of like a contemporary thriller, dark academia vibe, I think. But again, I'm just not interested in reading it. And why is this? Because I really, really, really want to reread Throne of Glass. That's all I want to do. The Throne of Glass series is something where a lot of people say it's not Sarah J. Mars' best work. However, it's a series I love to read and I reread it every year. I have reread every single book in preparation for each book as it was being published. So I've read Throne of Glass book itself so many times I know exactly what happens in the story and yet I really, really want to read it, but I know if I do that I'm going to go off on a complete Sarah J Mars tangent yet again and just give up on those last four books and probably not pick them up. So to help me with this dilemma I have put a poll up on my Instagram and I'm leaving it up to you guys to decide the fate because I really, 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 really want to reread it, but I do know that I do have four books left of my TBR. So. You guys are going to decide it for me. I will find out later today what that ends up being because I hope you guys are nice and you say I can ditch my TBR because to be quite honest that's just I just need some Sarah J Mars like I need that. Good evening, I've had a lovely day off, just spent the morning relaxing with my partner and then filming and editing today, getting my October TBR sorted and I finished Kingsbane. I've literally just finished it and oh my gosh, this ending, you guys, my heart, I just don't know if I can take it. There has been so much that has just happened in this book and I just cannot believe it. I've absolutely loved this book so, so much. I'm not even sure on the star rating right now because I haven't even put it through core power. I've just, I need a moment to gather myself. It was absolutely phenomenal. I loved it so much and I'm so happy I've pre-ordered the next book because I just, I need to know what happens. This is amazing. I absolutely love it. I think that there's a chance that this could come out as a five stars, if not a very high four stars, because I loved it. I thought the plot twists that were happening at the end, like, 
I just, I didn't see them come in. I am so shocked and I loved it. So that was absolutely amazing. And the result is back from the poll that I put up on Instagram and it clearly, clearly shows that I'm allowed to ditch my TBR and I am so freaking happy because I now get to pick up Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mars and read it for like the 15th time and I'm so freaking happy with it. It's gonna be hard not to try and binge read it all tonight, I won't lie, but I can at least get started with it and I can't binge read it because I do have work tomorrow. But it would be great if I could. It's been a really good reading day, I'm not gonna lie. King's Bane was absolutely phenomenal and now I get to start Throne of Glass. Perfection in an evening. Hello! I have had a lovely couple of evenings reading Throne of Glass. I haven't actually been binge reading it. I have been taking my time, I'm slowly annotating and tabbing up my book because it's the first time I've ever actually done that with this book and I'm so pleased I am. We all know that this book is absolutely amazing and if you don't know what Throne of Glass is I will be highly surprised because it's shouted about pretty much everywhere. But we are following a girl called Selena Sardothian who is an assassin assassin and she has just been freed from the mines of Endeavour where she has spent the last year and now has to take part in a tournament of sorts to become the king's champion and thus earn her freedom. I love this book. Oh my gosh, I love this series. To everyone that says that Throne of Glass isn't as good as Sarah J Maas books, you know what, that's a perfectly valid opinion, everyone's entitled to that, but for me I am astounded by the amount that Sarah J Maas put into the very first book that ties into the rest of the series and even into Kingdom of Ash. I think it's brilliantly well done. The amount that is actually hinted at this early on in the series, that's what I love about it. I love the fact that every time I reread this book, I pick up on things that were alluded to for later in the series. and. I think that's brilliant writing. I absolutely love it. So yes, I'm loving my reread. I'm enjoying taking my time. I normally really binge this and because I binge it, I have very little distinction between this book and Crown of Midnight, the second book. And so I keep expecting things to happen that don't happen until the second book. And I'm like, why hasn't that happened? And it's just like, oh yeah, because that's in the next book. So it's nice to actually take my time with this and I'm going to try and do that with the rest of the series. I will probably read a couple of books per month so that I can slowly annotate them and tab them up but do it slowly so I actually know each distinct book rather than just the whole series overall. So I think that's going to be great. I'm not going to put it as part of my TBR because these are just going to be my guilty pleasure reads when I'm not feeling my TBR or when I'm feeling a bit slumpy. This is going to be perfect. So I'm hoping that I will take my time with this in time for Court of Silver Flames when that comes out in February which I've just seen the cover reveal for that. I love it because it's going to match the editions that I have here although I am pre-ordering it in hardback but I will also be buying it in paperback when it comes out so it matches my collection so far. I'm just loving this. I think it's amazing. But I have realised that I haven't been doing a very good job of updating what books I've read for what Bookoplathon prompts and I figured seeing as it's pretty much the last week of Bookoplathon, I should just quickly recap where I'm at. So for role number one, we had Dark Cover and for that I read The Beautiful. I also had my very first re-roll on role number one, so I also ended up with a middle grade and I read Sailor Moon. Have to admit, that was a good reading week. I absolutely loved both of those books, absolute perfection. Then we had to read a book that's first in a series, which was From Blood and Ash, again, brilliant book. I've recently just got the second book which cannot wait to read that in October. Then I also had to read Standalone which was Enchantment of Ravens which was just a fun read. And then we had Set in the Past which was Kingsbane because it has the two timelines. And then this is where I haven't finished my TBR. So I still need to read The Night Circus because that was a chance card. I have read another prompt for Dark Cover which was Rhapsodic. I haven't read the foiled cover prompt, which is Court of Miracles, which I've just given up on and I've put it into my October TBR, but I have read my final role, which was LBQT plus representation, and I read Girls of Paper and Fire, and to be fair, pretty much most of the star ratings on these books have been spot on and I've been really enjoying them, but there are two books that I haven't read for this readathon and I just don't think I'm going to. I'm really not in the mood to read The Night Circus, I just... I don't know, it's just not something I'm interested in. So that's my little update for how I've been doing with this Bookoplathon readathon hosted by Becca with Becca and the Books. And 
I have enjoyed it. It's been really fun to do, but I do think I bit off more than I could chew with doing this and my own TBR game, because with my own TBR game, I also have two prompts left for that that I have not read, and again, I'm not sure. I might read one of them, but yeah. But I think for me personally, I'm going to finish Bicoplathon here, but it was a fun one to do and do let me know if you took part and if you've took any videos about it because I would love to check those out. I'm not finishing the vlog here, I need to go to work. I am going to finish this up tonight and then tomorrow is a very, very busy day, but I don't want to say too much about it, so we'll see how it all goes. Hello. It's been a minute since I updated. Sorry I didn't update over the weekend. It's been a very busy one. Starting off with Friday evening, I finished my reread of Throne of Glass. It came out as five stars. Even put it through Corpal and that came out as five stars as well. And I just, I'm very happy that it did. We all know how much I love this. I think I don't need to continue gushing about it, but if you haven't read it, do give it a try because really good. I love it. And then Saturday was a very busy day, but it was a really good one as I was able to attend my mom's wedding and it actually all went ahead, even with all the restrictions in place at the moment. It was a really great day. It was really nice to have all the close family members together and be able to celebrate something that's been a long time coming and definitely worth it. So that was an amazing day, very busy, but very enjoyable. And then Sunday, I literally spent the morning chilling out with my partner before we had our dinner reservations at PF Chang's, which is one of our favorite Chinese restaurants up in central London. The food is absolutely divine. And the start to this clip is the dessert. And oh my gosh, it is the best dessert ever. It's white chocolate and they pour hot toffee over the top so that it all melts. And inside it, you have ice cream, chocolate, popping candy, and it's just, it's delicious and I've missed it and it was so tasty. I also did pick up The Furies by Katie Lowe across the weekend. I have just under 200 pages left of this book and I'm kind of in two minds about this book. We're following Violet who is now attending this prestigious school to do her A-levels which in the UK are exams you have to take before you can go on to university. So she's now doing that after a year of homeschooling. While she is there she ends up in this group learning about a cult and that part is really interesting. I'm finding the lessons in that really good. I like the history that we get on how women have been perceived throughout time and information about the witch trials and all of this. That's fascinating. I really am enjoying that part of the book. But there is a side character in this book called Robin who I really, really don't like. So Violet is someone who's never really had any friends before and then she meets Robin and she desperately wants to be her friend, desperately wants to be included and liked. But Robin kind of abuses this and bullies Violet a lot and peer pressures her into doing things that she wouldn't normally do and I really don't like that. I hate bullying, I hate peer pressure, I hate that. And so to read it in a book, I just... I just don't like it. I really just think it's... It's just one of those few things in a book that if it's got it in it, I'm not going to enjoy it. And so I've pushed through and I've read the first 180 pages, but there's been two sides to it. Sometimes I'm really interested in what's happening and other times I could really just put it down. I'm not bothered to pick it back up again. And it's getting a bit tedious because Robin just doesn't let up. So I really don't like that. So far there's been trigger warnings for death of a family member, rape, drugs, and animal sacrifice. So there's a lot that's going on in this book, but just some of it I just, I'm really, really not liking. So to make it so that I have to finish The Furies rather than putting it down like I kind of want to, I am also reading Crown of Midnight, which is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. And I'm only allowed to read this after I've read my quota for The Furies. So, for example, today I have to read 100 pages of the Furies before I can continue with Crown of Midnight. And that's the way I'm kind of bribing myself into finishing this book because I think it's going to get better. It's definitely picked up now. It's just had a bit of a slow start. So I'm hoping that the bullying and peer pressure side of things will be kind of put to one side now that the plot's developing. But I guess we'll see. In Crown of Midnight, we are following Selena, who is officially the king's champion and going off and doing all the things that the king is asking her to do, which basically means killing people that he wants dead. I'm enjoying this book. 
obviously we all knew that I was going to say that but it is really good we've had a change in the dynamic between Dorian and Selena and now Kale and there's just a lot of elements going on and I'm enjoying it I like seeing her slowly start to change and I know this book is the start of what is to come in the rest of the series so I'm just really excited to get to that point but I am going to wrap the vlog up here it's been a bit of a long one but I've had a nice week it's been busy but worth it do let me know a couple of the books that you've been reading this week are there any you would really recommend or has there been one that you just have not enjoyed but if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe all my social media links to my Instagram Goodreads and Twitter will be linked below and I'll catch you in the next one.